I really wanted my biggest thing I wanted them to understand mm-hmm. above everything is common sense and traditionalism are friends. Mm. And that if we don't figure out a way to deviate deviate from the system that we've seen fail us a hundred times, we really not gonna get far like Hey, what's happening? What's happening? Welcome to Expeditiously. This is a a very uh, important episode, as uh, we always do. We want to have discussions with people who have uh, different perspectives uh, that can push the culture forward mm-hmm. and uh, fuel the next generation. Now, my my guest today is a self made entrepreneur. You've seen him all over the net. You know what I'm saying? He's a best selling author. Uh, a very committed father of five and over 500,000 people follow him on the gram. You know what I mean? I want y'all to welcome my partner, Derek Grace. What's Pre- happening? What's happening, little bro? Appreciate it. Enjoying this good weather in Atlanta. That's right. That's right. Now, you moved up here from Tampa, right? No, no. Well, I, actually, I haven't even officially moved yet. I was looking at some properties, but we haven't confirmed nothing yet. Okay. But I plan to, though. But you want to make the move. And, Absolutely. And Tampa is your home. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, you were born and raised there. Yeah, all 30 years been there. That's what's up. Yeah. Now, I, I, I first um, I first came to know about you from, you know, on the ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and it was when you and your daughter and I think your son, you were kind of going through some principles and yeah, some, yeah. you know what I'm saying, some rules and codes <laughs> of conduct, some protocols yeah, and yeah, procedures sure. with them. And I was impressed at, you Appreciate know, it. how your parenting skill mm-hmm. translated, you know, even through even through Instagram to me. And it's not many times as a father I see somebody, you know what I'm saying, who kind of, you know, pull something out their bag that I ain't got, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I think that was pretty cool. Appreciate that. Um, so tell us about your grind, man. How, how, like, what, what, when did you when did you know for sure that you were an entrepreneur? Uh, back in 2012, I had a, <clears throat> I was a 911 dispatcher at the time. What? Yeah. You were yeah, a 911 yeah. dispatcher? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. nah, before the tax. <laughs> Yeah, but no, no, I had tatted my whole body. I never hit my face though. Right, so before had, the face tat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the right. only thing I had hit was my my hands, my head, my face, and my neck. Okay, guys. But um, I end up losing that job, and, right. and and what I realized at that point is, a lot of us don't really know how much control these disenfranchised entities have over our lives until they actually snatch their power back. Mm. So it feel good when you're on the vacations, you get in the the overtime, you know yeah. that. You you got your comfort you, you you in your secure spot yeah but they don't really show you how much they they don't value you or, or how disposable you are so they really snatch you back so right uh, I remember when I lost that job in 2012 I told myself I never wanted to be tied into cor- corporate America again unless it was a partnership mm-hmm. and that's when I got the first ta- uh, first tattoo on my face and two what was the first one the first one was uh it's, it looked like an A over here it's an ancient symbol of strength gotcha that was the very first one I got and maybe probably within like two weeks I had nine more. What? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I got a real like uh. Invest. What else say new rules? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we. So we you making them up? It you, you just starts here. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that's what, like when when I created the unlearn and relearn movement. That's what it was all about. Us whitewashing out pretty much everything we've been taught and doubling yeah. back, getting our own individual perspective on life. Right now, I am with the unlearn relearn movement, man. I think everything that everything that we've been taught uh is a construct of of uh, a, a, a systemic oppression. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that that has been cast upon us and passed down from generation right, to right, generation. Right. Uh, so I do know all of this shit is a it's a sham. Yeah, I get it. You dig what I'm saying? Right. I ain't finna just you know go yell the scream from the mountaintop, but I will tell you, <laughs> most of the shit that you've been taught to believe is absolutely false. Just as sure as the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And we both have our children in the room, and I right. feel good saying that because I didn't think either of our children would go through the trouble of believing such right, a, right, right. a fictitious falsity. Absolutely. Um, so how what 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 got you motivated to unlearn and relearn? Um, well one when I when I was dispatching, um so I began to see that like um a lot of the game is really played by who you know. Right. And based upon your connections or who you have ties to, you're going to be able to navigate this jungle at a much smoother route. And even when you run into a bump of the road, yeah. you're going to be able to get them bump of the roads removed at, you know, much easier than the common man can. Mm-hmm. So I most sort of stopped, like, 
focusing on who was who had factions and who had groups of people who can make things move but trying to figure out how i could do it with my own people yeah. or emulate their systems but make sure my people was the beneficiary right. so really like the biggest thing i did it i had a shooting in 2015. a shooting yeah yeah i shot two people in 2015. you say that so casually uh I mean, I mean, not not casual. We from Florida. It's like the Wild yeah, Wild West. Yeah, out there. Everybody yeah, got yeah, guns yeah, out there. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, just so Atlanta. People don't understand how Atlanta. Well, excuse me. Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Carolina, yeah. Tennessee, Texas too. They got and Texas. Texas. They run around. They with don't understand there. how these places, like man, you're more you. You you if you want to stand out, mm -hmm. then don't care everyone. Right, right. <laughs> <You> <laughs> no, know you saying? ain't lying. Anybody I'm probably the only person who ain't carrying a gun around here. Yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Uh, and so you shot two people in 2015. Mm -hmm. Is there is it? The fact that you're speaking on it, you know, and is and you speak as an intelligent person, so I'm I'm, I'm assuming that there's no open investigation. Oh yeah, no no no, it was close. It was done. It was done so it was over done, yeah. so yeah. what happened? Uh, can you speak on it? Yeah, for sure. It was my 25th birthday. Uh, and I was going to get uh, the young lady who was my lady at the time. Uh huh. And uh, I hate driving, so when I pulled up to where I was getting her from, I automatically jumped in the passenger seat because I'm not. I hate driving. Right. So I'm 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 talking on one phone and I'm texting on another. I ain't even get a chance to tell I was outside. Right. But some relatives of hers were having an argument that spilled. Though I mean, I mean, you you ever had that moment where you and your mama might be arguing? What well, bro? Uh, yeah, yeah, you got siblings. You, you ever had that 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 moment where you you and mama maybe arguing? One of your siblings come in the room and they just get a whooping just because they showed up. Mm -mm. Or or I ain't never grew. I grew up as an only. I was the only child. Uh, I got I got a little brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got some older sisters. Mm -hmm. But nah, man, I ain't never. Uh, uh. Well, just bro. In, in, I got all my ass whoopings by myself. <laughs> well, I, well, well, I say this even, even in the streets, you may have had time where. You had an issue with one individual, he had somebody with him, so he ended up having to take the brunt of the punishment too just because he was with him. Like if me and my homeboy arguing and somebody who with him trying to jump in to your on homeboy, his you're defense. Gonna, y'all both going to turn around and be like, hold yeah, on, I'm, I'm able to call my homeboy yeah, that, not you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. one of them situations where they was already That when they realized you are the outsider. Absolutely. You that, are the weakest link. That's what I realized that day. <laughs> <laughs> so they having an argument. I end up pulling up at a bad time. Mine is my birthday. I got my daughter with me too. So the last um, thing I'm thinking about is some static. Right. Um, you know, things unfold. They end up opening my car doors. And what? Yeah, do do do. You that's know, just a violation. Absolutely, you especially no with your business. children. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a, you know. So, um, briefly after that, I end up shooting both of them. And so the, so they opened. They had firearms on them when they opened up the code. No, the no they had firearms. But just, bro, just by my rules, if I got my baby with hey, me, man, like I, I, I don't, you, you ain't you, doing nothing wrong. I yeah, see no foul. You could be no thirty, harm, no you could be thirty-five and three feet tall, but if I got my baby and try to violate me, like I'ma handle you, how I handle you that day. Man, I see no foul here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but the only bad part about it, right, was one of them happened to be her mother, and she jumped in the way. I was going, I was, I was Ooh. aiming to shoot the son. I ended up shooting mom too. So that's where like it, it got a little weird, cause yeah. And and you know, and, and no there's world, no women and children. Yeah, absolutely. Cross, and and no world code. Right. And nowhere do you get kudos for shooting a woman nah, at, not all. at all. Not at all. So that happened, but what really helped me to understand more so like knowing certain people and knowing certain things was the way that they handled my case. Mm -hmm. And basically like It was basically staying your ground. Absolutely. It was yeah. staying your ground for sure, but just the way in that day they, they, they took me in to the interrogation to all that, I understood like uh, I have certain family ties within law enforcement that allowed me, in my personal opinion, it allowed me to be handled differently than most people would have been handled. Okay. And realizing that, it just more so fueled me to educate my people on, like a lot of people don't know, bro, it's a whole war, a whole war going on outside. Oh, absolutely. It just about here lollygagging, la yeah, la la, not yeah. knowing. Like, it's a whole faction of anyone people that, that want to see y'all demise. Anyone who's read Behold the Pale Horse knows. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, bro, bro, that's that's one of the biggest things that pushed me to another level to be like. I gotta go harder with educating my people because they really don't know. Like, it's just so they dropped the charges. Absolutely, and no, nobody, nobody no died. There was no charge whatsoever. And no death. No death. Okay, that's that's positive. Like it, it was it, it was that real that they came back to me and asked me did I want to press charges for vehicular burglary? Nah. And I'm like, bro, their mama nah. got shot. Like, yeah, we, nah, that's, that's we enough damage been done. Just let it go. Yeah. But no, nah, that's that that was really one of the biggest things that let me know I had to go even harder with my teachings and educating people. And so that was in 15. 2015, yeah. And at this time, you had already walked away from the job Yeah, yeah I, I had been an entrepreneur for three years already at that point. Okay, gotcha. So as, as an entrepreneur, what was the first step you took uh, to build your empire? 
uh, where I tell you the first step, I had took so many steps. So one of the biggest ones I took, listening to Nip and his teachings, yeah. was just trying to get complete ownership over everything I was doing and creating my own price points and not following the market. Right. So by the time I came out with my second book, we was charging anywhere from 50 to to $100 for that book because I felt like that's what it was valued at. And that Scarcity. book ended up, yeah, and that book ended, that's the one that made me a number one selling author. That one ended up going number one. Mm. And from that point on, when I saw that formula work, I remember years ago, he talked about reading Contagious, and I picked up Contagious. Okay. I didn't read the whole thing. I read maybe 70 pages, and it clicked. And mm. then from there, that's when we, um, I had already told myself I was on Amazon. I'm like. Contagious by who? Because that's Jonah, what we do here. That's one Jonah of the Burger. things we do. Who? Jonah Burger. Jonah Burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contagious he, by Jonah Burger. Absolutely. That, that was a game changer for me. But uh, I had already told myself, I'm like, you know what? Once my following and my influence get to a certain level, I'm snatching my stuff off Amazon. We're mm. just going to use Amazon as a vehicle to get bigger. Right. But one, once the bread hit a certain point, we're getting out of there. Because anybody that's on Amazon, they use, they typically taking 60% of your earnings anyway. 60. Yeah, so it, it ain't even worth it. And I, I tell people, like, the reason why most of these entities empower as is is because they have relevant names. Right. Because, like, we can create our own Amazon. We can create our own YouTube. But because they have relevant names... It, it just sound better to be like my book on Amazon rather than my book on DerekGrace2.com. Right. So what I did at that point, after we went number one, we basically used them in a in a in a in a, in a sense, well, and they got paid too. Yeah, absolutely. So it was a business transaction. Yeah, we 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 got the number one. We snatched everything off, and then we went independent with everything from self publishing and everything. And at that point, my units didn't go. We didn't sell as many units, but we made more money, and we kept all the money. And that was mm. that's what made the biggest difference for me to invest in other parts of my business. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you co-parent your five children mm -hmm. and you got, you know, two different ladies in your life that, that assist you with that. I got three, well, three, three baby mamas total, five children. Okay. So three ladies in your life that assist you with, with parenting your five children. Right. All right. Um, at one point you all lived under the same roof though, right? Two of them. Yeah. We lived under the two same of them lived yeah. under the same. Well, why the one, third one get left out? She in the military. So okay, she, gotcha, she ain't gotcha, even in the gotcha, city. Gotcha, gotcha, I ain't gonna okay. lie though, she wouldn't have went for it anyway. She wouldn't no, have went for it. Nah, she wouldn't have came. But what you mean, why not? And she, uh, back then she wasn't as fun as the other baby mamas. Well, how about this? What is it that the other two have that you think she doesn't? Uh, what kind of there, like what kind of concept or philosophy is it? A lot of her ways and thought patterns are based on traditionalism. Mm. So a lot of times she's not even receptive to different information. She won't even hear it out. Mm. So that's what really, that's why I think that wouldn't have went no way because her teachings would her teachings from older people would already told her like don't go for that whatsoever. Well, listen, man. Let me. Well, for those out there who want to be smelling what you're selling, why don't you lay it out there, man? <laughs> Tell them exactly what to like. What's what's the what, what's the procedure? How you like? What, um, what is the lifestyle? Is it polyamorous? No, 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 not ever. So, bro, this is how I was working. I was with one mom, and then the other mom had a girlfriend. So it was really two couples living in one house, but it was one man and three women. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. All right. So you and your five children. Well, it wasn't five at a time. It was three. It was three. No, okay. two. It was yeah. It was Derek and Derek. And my oldest two got the experience. No, no. It was four because I, I I had Melanin, God, Derek, and Derek. They all got the experience there. You say Melanin? Yeah, Melanin, God, God, Derek, and Derek. Derek and Derek. Yeah. All right. So you have your four children, mm -hmm. and you have your your, your companion, mm -hmm. and uh, the. The, a mother of one of the four children mm -hmm. also stays with you who's not a companion. Yeah, she had her own companion. She has a companion, right. though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically y'all two couples is just roommating. Yep, that's And just happen to, to share it. children. Yeah, and and my, my, my okay. those two daughters, God and Melanie, are five weeks apart. So gotcha. we, we had one. Uh, Melanie Wait a minute, was, five, excuse me? Yeah, five weeks apart. House, okay, so... See now, I I understand. I yeah. got a nineteen year old and two eighteen year olds. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. uh, my eighteen year olds three months apart. I got you. You know, so I can I I, I understand how mm -hmm. one could find himself in such a situation, living together under the same roof. However, yeah, that is a complete like I am astonished. Yeah, appreciate it. I I think a lot of that is based off. 
with co-parents especially, and even in that situation, it's just having a healthy level of communication. How long did this go? Did this go on? About three years. Okay, so you got, just for, for lack of a better term, you, your old lady, your mm -hmm. baby mama, and her old lady. Right. Whew. So how did this work? Uh, how did those women get along? No, nah, they, they actually got along well. For and how them. did they all get along with you? Yeah, no, they, they they got along well for the most part. Seemed like they would have kicked your ass out of there. No, 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 no. We 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 as a group and collectively we had a great time. And, okay. And we, and we and we function we function very well, especially for the like I know one thing about children love is like like most children, they have options. So meaning like if one said no, I've literally seen them like bounce to four different people and ask the same question. <laughs> so I know like my children loved it because they, they just you know, it was a house full of energy. You had a lot of outlets and right. like and a lot of people go to pick up other people's slack. Right, but no, like collectively, we we work well, we gel well, we share a lot of the same ideas and concepts. So okay, yeah, yeah, we we bump heads on a lot. Got you, okay, got you. Now, of course, as a as a committed, dedicated, and and, and uh, present father, mm -hmm. uh, I I ask you how important you feel it is mm -hmm. to be uh, an involved father. Uh, I mean. I feel like it's extremely important. I feel like the lack of father, the lack of fathering, is one of the main reasons we have a lot of lost young ladies and we have a lot right. of not so strong young men. So, right. nah, I think that's a that's a, I mean that I mean t to me the father is just as vital as the mother. When she come with the nurturing, she gonna have a different level of understanding, and your father gonna you know more than likely he gonna give you a masculine energy, give you strength, and put you on a type of game that a lot of women, especially young girls, need and sons. Sure. Now, you know, I agree completely. I mean, I think that at a time like now, mm -hmm. it is dangerous to be the dinosaur of the dads of yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I believe in what I believe in, and I know, you know what I'm saying, I know that I have a pure heart, mm -hmm. and that gives me a clear conscience. Uh, how do you, like, have you ever found yourself in a position where other neighbors or people around you within mm -hmm. the community saw your parenting style mm -hmm. and criticized you or judged oh, you? Yeah, absolutely. Or try, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> how, how, how does that work? Um, I mean, I get it all the time. Like when we first put the gun videos out with the gun education, that right. was the biggest one. Like right. they, they, they went in on me for days. And guess what? See now, me myself personally, I see absolutely nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. because you know why? Is is redneck white boys teaching their kids the same thing at absolutely. the same age? They going hunting, they right, right. they fishing. <clears throat> You know what I mean? They mm. teaching them how to how to skin deer, yeah, yeah, and you know what I mean? How to how to how to scale fish, right. and all kinds of other things at a very very early mm -hmm. age, and how to defend the house, right, right. Uh, and to be quite honest, it never raises any antennas. No, Nobody's no, no. ever alarmed. <laughs> so why is it that when my brother, you yeah. know, who's a, a, a black man mm -hmm. with long dreads and a face full of tattoos, but a caring, loving, and committed father, why when he mm -hmm. shares the knowledge of, of, of self-defense with right. firearms with his children and mm -hmm. presents that to the world, why is it so ostracized? I, I think a lot of it got to do with uh, us as a culture. A lot of us have poor self-image. So, like, I just had this conversation a couple of days ago. I've seen a video that it say, Tip, Jay-Z, and Diddy part of the Illuminati. Mm. Because a, a, a nigga can't get money in this country and keep his morals intact. Yeah. But you'll see, they'll post, uh, what's bro name that got Amazon? Bezos. Uh, Bezos. They'll po we'll repost him all day. Yeah, we don't we don't claim Illuminati. We right. don't say nothing bad about him. Right. We just oh, oh Jeff Bezos made this in an hour. He yeah. made this and that. So I think our self image is so low that we actually look at our peers and ourselves like, who are you to try to be something? Like, who is you niggas to try to win? Right. So I think that's what it really stems from. Who are you to do something different? Absolutely. So when you what actually gives you the fucking nerve, right? <laughs> so when you get proactive about things, it actually scares us. To me, for two reasons. One, it turns a mirror on the lackluster effort we put towards being ready for life. Right. And then it also it just scares us to be like, like you said, like who would you do, who would you to try to be great or to yeah. try to figure this How life dare you? out? The audacity. Right. Um, I think that. I think you're absolutely right. And I also think that people project their fears and failures For sure. onto other people. Right. Uh, the fact that, you know, they feel like, man, 
for me to make it, I'd have had to join the Illuminati. Right, so right, they right. must have had to. Absolutely. Man, quite na- and like I mean, quite naturally, you know, I've never been invited to the Illuminati. Mm-hmm. Whoever, you know, just whoever's <laughs> asking. You know, you get it direct from my mouth. I don't even know what the fuck the shit like really means. Right. Uh and I'm far too anti establishment. Mm-hmm. I roll too far against the machine. Right. You know what I'm saying? And color too much out the lines for anyone to even assume or believe that <laughs> such a thing would be possible for me. Yeah. I have a very, 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 very hard time with authority, like mm-hmm. following rules. Right, and, right. You know what I mean? I just don't, you know, it just doesn't feel. Yeah. Like, who are you to enforce these rules? You ain't following the rules either. Absolutely. You breaking them somewhere. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, if you breaking them, psh- yeah, what make why, you think, why you enforcing me? It means right, right. this is a free for all now. Yeah. So that means I'm going to abide by the things that I feel like uh, keep my morals and values intact. Exactly. You dig what I'm saying? I follow God's law, you know, mm-hmm. and God told me to be fruitful and multiply. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you know, and, <laughs> enjoy the land and the fowl of the earth. You dig what I'm right. saying? Uh, so. I understand where you coming from greatly. Uh but but a lot of people mm-hmm. as they I mean motherfuckers, you know, uh, as you know, they have very adverse opinions about me. Right. Uh mostly because of their own false assumptions, but you know, we ain't going to trip on that. Mm-hmm. But they have adverse opinions of me because I refuse I'm not going to just roll with what you say cuz you say so. Yeah, yeah, bro. I I saw that recently and this is my biggest thing. I don't see how so many motherfuckers that got nothing going on mm. take time out of their life to converse and debate and make full blown videos mm. about somebody who got every fucking thing going on. That's just weird to me. Mm. And to is a, videos being made? Bro, I seen video. What I seen everything. I, I don't even remember. Bro, she had like she had the IGTV video, so it was longer than a minute. I'm just like, bro, y'all got to find what some shit What do you mean, videos like talking about? Yeah, just, oh, okay. just, just overly discussing somebody else's life that, that got shit in order. It's artificial importance. Yeah, it's artificial importance. Mm-hmm. You know, people feel like for one thing, people don't have their own opinions anymore. Everybody gets up, cuts on Instagram, and see what everybody else saying, and that's <laughs> what they saying today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's up? Oh, no, they against it. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it either. I'm not right. going to be the only one who's saying yes in the room full of no's. Right, right, right. I don't have that kind of self respect. I don't have that kind of uh, that 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 kind of self esteem, sense of self, and all of the all of the above. I must. Go with the majority, right? And the majority saying this, so this is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's very few of us who's gonna be willing to stand up in a room of adversity and really say what we feel. Absolutely, very few. That's why you know when when a lot of the shit controversy controversial shit pop off. My main thing is stay off Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like don't, cause you got to go find that them problems. Right. You know what I mean? Cause if I walk, just deal with my day. Everybody mm-hmm. respectful to me, and I'm respectful to them. Right, right. You know, some of them same people making them video, man. If I walk in there, if I walk in their school, I went straight to Spelman College, mm-hmm. right in the midst of the controversy, because I <laughs> walked my daughter through Spelman College. Yeah. She's looking, to, she's <clears throat> looking to go there, and mm-hmm. we had a phenomenal time. You know what I'm saying? Took pictures. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Was happy to see me. I was right, happy right. to see them. And you would think. By by the temperature of the internet, mm-hmm. that that would be the eye of the storm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But everybody knows me, and I think at some point in time, reputations must speak for themselves. Absolutely. Now you may have an opinion about you mm-hmm. and how you uh, introduce your children to self-defense with mm-hmm. firearms and, and also other things that they need to know on their right, journey. Right. Some people may have adverse opinion to that, but they can never say that you're not a good father. Absolutely, because your actions and reputations is it, it, it states that. Right, and that's bro. That's that's one of the biggest things I I try to tell people. Like, I call it preventative maintenance. Mm. So because they're reactive, they typically wait on adversity to hit, and then they try to educate them, their children to a level of understanding sure. and how to overcome the issues. I more so assess life from my perspective and say, damn. All right, I need to prepare y'all how to handle money. I need to prepare y'all for peer pressure. Mm. We done had a, we we been having a sex talk. We just for me, big bro, I focus on transparency. Right. And one of the biggest things I ever say is like, if don't nobody know me at my funeral, thoroughly my children will. Right. We have very transparent conversations, but a lot of parents don't want to admit that parenthood is a competition. A lot of them have a sense of entitlement because they actually created them or birthed them, but not realizing like, if your boyfriend was able to convince you to run away, 
or your old lady was able to convince you to buck your mama roots and sneak out the window, mm. your mother is now competing with him for your attention and your and your guidance. Right. So a lot of parents don't want to be honest and say, like, you competing with the television and TV, the homies, the homegirls, everything. So for me. Not to mention the Instagram. Exactly. Like and, and comments. And, and, and the gram so broad now. Like, I yeah. remember last year, like, when the video came out with Black China. And Which then, video? Um, she was having oral sex with somebody. Oh. But. The fact that it's youngins on social media or their friends got social media, your child just got introduced to something that you too scared to have a conversation with them this about. So now, like, you gotta, you, you gotta um, accelerate the, you gotta accelerate the curriculum. Exactly. No, you, <laughs> you, you got to because technology is so advanced, it advances so broad that they can get access to anything. Yeah. I know, like, I'm 30, so we had, we had MySpace, but other than that, like MySpace one turned up like the ground. Man, let me tell you something. I'm 39. Yeah. We had girly magazines, <laughs> and, you know, trying to sneak up, wake, <laughs> wake, stay up late to watch the 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 fuzzy channels. Right, right, right. If you got the right cable box, yeah. you know what I'm saying. You got to go between this channel and this channel, and you can slide the 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 uh, picture would show partial mm-hmm. like i think i saw a nipple yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> you know what i'm saying so and, and uh showtime after dark and all that kind of yeah. stuff big country just walks in mm-hmm. what's going on interrupting the show uh that's my that's my brother oh, yeah, no, bro. I know what country is. What's up? What's going on, bro? long time long time uh, a close friend and family member Big country king. So yeah, man. Now they're they're introduced to everything. Could you imagine being able to, at the push of a button, Google mm. intercourse? Right. Like I like kids can if they got a phone, they yeah. got a data plan. It's going down. They can Google whatever they want to see. Exactly. And you can't stop it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But there has to come a certain level. There ha- there has to come. With a, that kind of access must come with a certain level of guidance. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Certain level of direction. Right. A certain level of awareness. For sure. Uh, so I don't have a problem with what you're doing. Could you give us an example of what we saw on on the video? Just so you know, what I'm saying if you and your daughter could do a demonstration for us. Which one, bro? When you when you uh you kind of went through qu- different questions and okay. asked them different stuff. Come on, baby. Come help me out. Come on, man. Stop acting crazy. Princess. Major, pay attention. All right, babe. So, uh, how old are you? Eight. Speaking to, Speaking to the microphone. Come on. Eight. Speak up. Get your posture right. Eight. All right. Um, what's a 401k? I don't know. What's, uh, what's a 457? No, I don't know. All right, but I, I know what you do. Now tell me how to create an LLC. Choose a name for your LLC. Decide. Speak up. Speak up. Choose a name for your LLC, decide who will be your registered agent, create articles, organization, draw up an operating agreement, file for an EIN number. Okay, now slow down for me this time. Tell me what an EIN number is. Choose a name for your LLC, decide who will be your registered agent. No, no, tell me what an EIN number is. Oh, it's a unique identification number that could be assigned by the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, which is Uncle Sam. Do we bang with Uncle Sam at all? No. No, we don't really rock with him, do we? All right, listen, before you pick up a gun, though, what's the four things to do? Make sure the gun is empty, check the clip, and do not point it at anybody you're not willing to destroy. I appreciate you, babe. One more thing, because, too, a, a lot of us that's getting money or that's in the e-commerce world, a world period, we, we, we rely on banks. Tell me what's that thing called fractional reserve banking that, that banks get off on the people more than the people get off on the bank. Banks get permission to governments to loan flip and gamble other people's money. I appreciate you, babe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, princess. That was amazing. Did you see that, Major? Yes. Mom, Major said he's afraid of what might happen next. Nah, I'm, I'm not going to quiz you today, Major. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, I, I know how you are. And, you know, Major, has a, he had a long day in school. And so we we gonna make sure that he has an opportunity to observe and yeah. set a bar for himself now that he's seen. How old are you? Eight. She's eight. How old are you, Major? Eleven. Eleven. You got some work to do, buddy. <laughs> but it's all right because you're you're a hard worker and a great kid. Um, now speaking of which, so Major just got out of school today. Mm-hmm. We've been spending the rest of the day together. That's my buddy. 
my little genius a brilliant mind if i mm -hmm. must say so myself but you choose to homeschool right. your children mm -hmm. could you tell me what's the thought behind that uh bro <clears throat> i'm just not i'm not really big on the public school system i'm gonna say in florida though because for me to generalize them all over the nation would be wrong because i've okay. been everywhere all over the nation to check them right but i'm gonna say in florida though my son was i integrated him into that system and what i began to realize is that those like one of the biggest things that bother me with the public school system is those curriculums are a lot of them are based off traditionalism mm -hmm. a lot of them were heavily based off the teachings and the thought process of success of our actual oppressors mm -hmm. so what happens three generations later is that the grandchildren of our oppressors are the actual people who may be teaching our children mm -hmm. so for me to hold my child to a standard where i celebrate him or punish him based off what his oppressors deem was was the keys to success was just crazy to me. Mm. And I ain't gonna say I always thought that because I didn't. Like I said, my son was in public school, but at a certain point I took him out because I began to realize like, I don't know if they have it in the A, but they taught us about put, uh, Pythagorean theorem. I don't know if they had it in the A, or even parallelograms. Yeah. I know that's all over the world. Absolutely. But as I look at my journey as, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't go to college long. I got like four credits and left. It just wasn't for me. Right. But as I look at my journey of people around me, I begin to realize, like, to me, school has turned into, like, a daycare where the adults take their children while they handle their adult duties. Mm. Because a lot of the information that they're giving in there don't really benefit them long term. And then, too, like, research says that most children are only learning maybe uh, two, I think, two hours and 15 minutes to two hours and 50 minutes a day. Mm. The remainder of the day is free time, lunch time, heads up, seven up, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So... Once I started paying attention to that, and then I started paying attention to the bias on how, like, they they section off our culture, typically in certain schools and other, like, e even down to the to the way they reprimand, it's totally, it's a lot of it's handled different when it comes to our culture. That's right. And I just knew, like, I didn't want the, 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 the nurturing of my child's mind to be in the hands of the people who had a granddad that don't didn't appreciate my children being alive, period. Yeah, That's, that's why like, even, like, even punishing, I just, I think, I, I have that conversation with parents all the time, like, Think about putting your hands on put putting your hands on your child because they don't perform well in a system that wasn't created for them in the first place. Right. So I do feel like basics wise they do have some great things in school. Like for me, I'm not gonna lie. Only thing I appreciated in school was English and reading, mm. and I happen to be a number one selling author. So I'm not gonna knock them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna knock them and say they didn't give me nothing because they right, did. Right. Some tools they did give me, but right. for the most part. And mathematics. Yeah, yeah, mathematics because mm. you you know entrepreneurship. That, that don't change. Right. That <laughs> don't change. You can't change math. So I mean they they do have some 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 pluses about. It. I'm not gonna say they all. They bad, can't cap on that math though. Yeah, yeah, they for can't sure. Cap on that math. You know I made a I made a, a algebra teacher quit. Oh for real? Yeah, man. Um, in Doug High, I was mm -hmm. in 10th grade. Uh, I, I was clad clown, man, mm -hmm. all 12. Well, I ain't go 12 whole years, but every year I went to school, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I dropped out in the 10th grade, but I was clad clown. <laughs> and this is the highlight of my class clowning career. Mm -hmm. So he was an algebra teacher, and we was having, we was going back and forth about me showing my work mm -hmm. in algebra. And I do math in my head. So, I kept giving him the right answer, so he was thinking that I was cheating or whatever. But I was—I really had the right answer, so finally, mm -hmm. and I just kept saying throughout that 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 course of that section that you can't make us show our work. You can't right. make us as long as we know it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to show you how we arrived. Right. And so he he called me up to the board and asked me, "All right, will you come teach the class?" Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Man, I thought you'd never ask." All right. So I get up there like, all right, well, cool. Well, they tell you to do that, but you don't really need to do that because if mm -hmm. you know this, then you you know that. You know, all you got to do is blase, blase, and you right. got to write that down, just remember it, and mm -hmm. then you use that, to, you know what I'm saying, so on and so forth. And I wrote out the, the, the right answer, and the whole classroom erupted. Yeah. And he said, I ain't got to take this shit. Fuck these kids. Grab mm -hmm. this stuff and walked out and never came back. Yeah. He quit that mm -hmm. day from being a teacher. All right. No bullshit, no Jeff, no cap. When he left, I thought he was going to get the principal on me. Yeah. And he never came back. The mm. bell rung, and the next day it was a substitute, and it was a substitute from the oh, rest yeah, of the day. Oh, yeah, bro was out of there. He never came yeah. back, bro. Mm. And, and and now that I look back, I think, good, because your ass didn't have no business in there no way in the first place. Right, right. You know, because obviously either you weren't equipped or, or, or weren't passionate Exactly. About educating in any way, because if you, 
if you it, one thing you should have known is that I knew my stuff. Right. And you probably to be able to know somebody who faking from somebody who really know what they doing. Yeah. And you should have saw me as an advanced student mm -hmm. and dealt with me differently because exceptions are made for exceptional circumstances. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that public school don't do or school curriculum don't do in don't do well anyway. They don't deal with our children as individuals. Absolutely. They expect every child to learn on the same page, to learn from the same methods, mm -hmm. and, and, and to perform the same way. And I, I'm because of, that was one of the things that happened with my son. The teacher mm. would be like, oh, he do his work, but he go find trouble to get into when he done. I'm like, well, maybe y'all ain't challenging him enough. Yeah. He'll do stuff like he'll knock the work out, get an A, but crawl under the desk or break pencils or right. cause a disruption. I was like, well, is he a terrible child or is y'all work just not challenging, but they ain't get it, so we end up parting ways. Mm. Mm. So now, when you take on the responsibility of homeschooling, is there, are you hiring someone to homeschool or you're doing it? No, I started doing it myself. So mm. one of the first ways that I figured out, uh, I, I, I initially signed him up for a, uh, a, a homeschool program that was online. Okay. And I, I it was crazy, right? Because I go through their curriculum too, uh -huh. It's basically the same stuff they teaching them in the building. <laughs> uh, I remember getting with the, because um, they have like a virtual teacher you can always hit up if you need help. Okay. And I remember um, we came to a spot and he had a history lesson and they wanted me to teach him about Columbus. Nah. I remember hitting, I was like, hey, I'm not comfortable teaching him that. She was like, look, Mr. Grace, you just insert what you feel like is history in your opinion and go from there. And I did that, and I'm like, wait. Well, yeah. I, I remember Don, it dawned, I'm like, damn, this teaching thing ain't really that hard. I ain't got to use y'all stuff at all. <laughs> so from that point on, me and her communicated a little while longer, and I just started inserting what I felt like he needed to know. And then from that point on, I was like, okay, I guess I can kind of teach because he getting it. Right. He, 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 he digested it, and I went from there. So now you <laughs> wrote, you've, you, you've written a few books about your curriculum. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You've written a few books about your curriculum called Unlearn and Relearn. Mm -hmm. Uh how did you come up with it and what grade level does it go up to i got you so uh i started out with books i started out with my autobiography and then i got the gods amongst men series that's a self-help type of collection it's, mm -hmm. it's like four or five of those the curriculum started because i made a video in 2016 that ended up going viral where mm -hmm. i was teaching them about entrepreneurship ownership things of that nature mm -hmm. and it was the, it was the, it was a demand from the people and I ain't gonna lie, I had, I had maybe like 2,000 followers at the point. I just woke up one day, <laughs> it was June 8th on her birthday. I woke up one day, and my, my following I had, at like 62,000. My phone jumping, and somebody like, you went viral. I'm like, what's that? They was like, <laughs> that's like, that mean you big on the internet and your video got a bunch of views. I'm like, oh, okay. I ain't think nothing of it. But literally by the weekend, the demand came, and people was like, how can we teach our children that? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so I sat there. That's what I'm trying, I was, my next question was, can you teach this to Major? Oh yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. So, Major needs to know this. Derek, will you please you, teach buddy. Major? Bless you, darling. Will you please teach Major some of the stuff you know? Huh? Why are you whispering, man? You would you mind, Major? Major, would you mind learning? No, man. Hey, man. <laughs> you looking like I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you what. Let's do this. <clears throat> Y'all go and and let Derek run some of the stuff by you, and then when you come back, you know you can show me what you learned. <laughs> hey, come here, come here, speak up in into the mic. What'd you say? Better idea. How about instead you do this some other time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, as long as you as long as long as you commit and give me your word that we'll we'll come back to it. All right. Done. So so whenever I say whatever time I say it's time to do it, that's when we gonna do it or we gonna agree on the time. I will agree on time, but if me and you are uh, on different times, I break the tie. Okay. All right, cool. That works yeah, for that's me. A bet. All right. So, so the curriculum that you that you came up with it goes up to what grade oh, yeah. level? So, big bro, when I write them, I try to write them from the per depending on what the what the topic is, but I try to write them from the perspective of both parent and child. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have parent child volume one and volume two. Mm -hmm. I got a co-parenting curriculum. I got one called Corner to Corporate that speaks from a street level and a corporate level and showing them both how they can basically control their destinies. Mm. So basically telling you how to walk away from the corporate structure, create your own structure. And if you a street dude, how to take the resources you have, handle them a certain way so you can then transition to a corporate structure right. and be an actual legit businessman. And then I got, I got the family journal. That one is more so like 
how I deal with my children. Uh, mm-hmm. The kid glove theory, like that's that's something I I, I created a while back. Is just uh just knowing how to how how to speak and how to deal with your children with a certain handle that you don't deal with everybody else. Like just give you a quick example in the, in the co-parenting curriculum, right? I got this example and I was like. When you ride by law enforcement, I'm sorry, when, when law enforcement jump behind you, people typically, even if you ain't nervous, you're just going to make sure you got your seatbelt on and things of that nature so they ain't got no reason to bother you. Mm-hmm. But then you'll have people who deal with the, the, the mother, their child, the mother, their father, and never use these type of tools. So you understand how to put your kid gloves on in certain situations so they don't escalate. But you will speak to your baby father in a manner or use trigger words that you know going to piss him off to get his attention in a negative way. Mm. So... I mean, no, no different than when you got your phone on you and your boss walk by, you're going to take the phone and do like this just to avoid that trouble. Mm-hmm. So why not put the kid gloves on when you're dealing with the mother of the, or the father of your child and handle them in the same manner just to avoid any trouble, extra turmoil. So mm-hmm. I got it from co-parenting to business to uh, firearms. You know, I, I'm, I'm huge on firearms. I love guns. but You know what? Me too. I just can't handle it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I, I, I got like six or seven seven or eight curriculums but as far as the ages i try to write them from both perspectives so the youngin can understand and the, and the mother or the father can understand on how to approach the youngin with this information but if i wanted to homeschool my children mm-hmm. you telling me that you have a curriculum that i could follow that would allow them to pass yeah absolutely i i, I feel like through example with my own it's children, accredited no, it's not. It's not a crazy. It's not. So, so I have to teach them this in addition to. Absolutely. It's that. an additive. That's why I tell everybody. Yeah. It's an additive. And for me, it's more so the real world information that we really need. Okay. Like not not knocking, again, not knocking school completely. There's some things in there that matter. But Yeah, I but, think you get a lot of social, a lot of social interaction, mm-hmm. teach you how to deal with people. I also teach you how to, um, to discipline yourself to doing something and dealing with people that you don't necessarily want to deal with right in order to accomplish a goal absolutely you know what i mean uh i think that dealing with the teacher that you <clears throat> hate to deal with mm-hmm. prepares you for dealing with Definitely the co-worker sure. or the 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 employer mm-hmm. that you hate to deal with yeah, yeah. so and if you never learned that in six seven eighth ninth tenth eleventh twelfth grade right then when you get to that place, you'll be foreign. It'll be foreign to right, you. Right. Unless, you know, you become an entrepreneur like mm-hmm. your children are and sell, you know what I'm saying, a million board games. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying, so a board game. Now, that's different. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. You have a board game. A lot mm-hmm. of people have books. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people do, a lot of motherfuckers wear chains and do music and right, shoot right. videos and influence on the gram mm-hmm. but actually having a board game yeah so you see th- this is the thing that i see you are developing systems you mm-hmm. know what i mean because you writing books that are curriculums to be taught right that's a system absolutely you know what i'm saying you're talking to me and philosophizing about a theory of how people can interact and communicate and co-parent together mm-hmm. right uh in in harmony right so see that is a system that 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 has to be set and that to me is prolific appreciate that because it take a lot of time most motherfuckers myself included uh i'm gonna focus on how to strategize and to you know discipline myself to deal with my family right but I ain't got time to sit down and write this shit down for y'all. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? I'm going to get it together for us. Right, right. But y'all going to have to pick up on mine as it go. But you actually did, you you, you took the time out, Mm -hmm. set yourself down, and the curriculum, the books, the biographies, uh, all of that led to the in-home banking board game. Yeah, for sure. Um, So the concept started in 2017 Mm. which is crazy right because what made you want a board game bro so i do courses on in-home banking okay and what i realized is that traditional learning and teaching is phasing out Mm. you're gonna have to find bro the best advice uh banner ever gave me he hit me in 20 in 2017 talk about my big brother david bell yeah for sure he hit me in 2017 and I just had made them. I was like, you know what? Fuck these people. They don't listen. I'm tired of talking to them. <laughs> Man, that's right where I'm at. Yeah. Boy, you talking about, boy, you, you read my mind boy, right before I walked in here. 
He hit Jeez, me right. How you get yourself out of that, man? Bro, Banner helped me right. He hit me on some random. Because I really stopped caring, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People really showed no, bro, me I, the worst I, I ain't gonna lie. I've been there. I've been there where I like that. I really stopped caring. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, like, the worst thing, the worst feeling to have is feeling like you just got to continuously fight with the people you fighting for. Exactly. You know what I mean? But that's exactly how I felt, right? So. At this point, it feels, de- it feels like you defeated. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. It feels it's like, like it's like it's, it's just like getting hit with multiple catch 22s. Like all right, I whoop this, and then y'all gonna come up with another. You know what I mean? You're gonna yeah. continue to just move the finish line every time. Right. I feel like I have, you know, uh, uh, satisfied mm-hmm. a certain section of improvement. Right, right, right. Yeah, but you still got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like come on, bro. You you find me a perfect person with a perfect message, and mm-hmm. then you, you tell him he can he can take my spot. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly, bro. So it was 2017. Just had got that feeling like, man, the hell with these people. I ain't fucking with them. Anymore. Right. I I literally said, you know what? I'm gonna go back to just strictly entrepreneur and take care of my family. And you know what I mean? Off. Me and mine. Right. Ben Get it how you live. Benny hit me in the deal, and he like, bro. I, I sent him a message one day, and he just he finally seen it that day. He hit me back, right. he like, call me. So we talking. He was like, bro, the best thing you could do for your people is meet them where they at. Uh. And when he, I know it's a simple line, but when he told me that, it changed everything. I was like, you know what? That makes sense. I'm peeping. I'm doing these courses. Like our last course, we had like 2,800 students. Dope. 52 people turned into homework, though. What? At the end, that's what I say. But they paid you for the course. Yeah. They paid you to take the course. Right. It didn't bother to do and homework. And apply none of the information. They just wanted a picture. Right. No, you, you know what? <laughs> so on Sundays, on Sundays we would do live courses. Okay. I start realizing someone just wanted to say what's up. Yeah. They really literally cut their Zoom call on. It's like, Derek, what's up, nigga? I'm like, what's going on with you? They hop out. They gone. I ain't learned nothing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Some of y'all just wanted to hang out. That's why y'all should the course. Right. But um, last October... Um, we coming off the hills of the last course, and I got I got some great medicine in my system. Okay, and I'm sitting. I'm like, you know what? We need to make this a board game. Um, and what I realized at that point, that medicine is that will do it for you. It will. You know, what it I'm will. Saying? It'll talk to you if you listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what I realized at that point, I'm like, our culture is so overly invested in entertainment. Mm-hmm. I got to find a way to entertain them. Mm. And basically, this method was like more so medicine in the candy. So. When you say board game, people go initially think fun. Right. Until they open it up and realize you gotta learn about laws and trust in here. You gotta learn about the difference between driving and traveling. So when the folks pull you over, they can't handle you how they wanna handle you. Mm. So, bro, big bro, that's that's really how it morphed into the actual board game was me just saying, I gotta meet y'all where y'all at because traditional education don't entertain y'all. It's not fun enough. Right. So I had to basically lie to them like they was gonna have the time of their life. And so they opened it and was like, man, this nigga really trying to make me learn something. Like, <laughs> even, even, but, but do they actually play the game? Yeah, Let's nah. play the game, man. Come so on, look, man. even to play the game, right? Okay. You got to define. Y'all want to play a game? Yeah, we're we'll playing the in-home banking game. And yeah, just just so y'all know, like, big, right. big bro, this one is an actual sample. This one ain't, nev- this one ain't never came out. Want to make sure you had a special one, but this is an actual sample. But you got the perm on right here. Yeah, bro, they sit so low. <laughs> oh, look, this is the thing, right? What is this, silk and slim? <laughs> That's the pimp. You stay away from the pimp. <laughs> hey, the fact that you got a sample. Stay away like, from the pimp. You're you going to have, like, if you look at the front of the board, too. Okay. They messed up my baby German baby. My baby got the slick back. I don't oh, know. Derek, Derek yeah. got the mystical plaques and all. But we going to fix that on the official. I would say okay, this cool. is actual So the pimp sample. ain't going to be on there. No, no, no. This is actual sample. See, that's how they want to see us, see? Exactly. That's how they want to see us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With a comp looking like. Uh, uh, what is Detroit Red? <laughs> right, right, right. Instead of like Malcolm X, you know what exactly. I'm saying? I'm with you. So yeah, the thing about the game though is that even to play the game by directions, you got to yeah. define the intellectual property. So okay, these spots are intellectual properties like trade lines and CPN. Mm. That's a big thing. A lot of our culture not educated on. Other cultures know it. Now, what is trade lines? What's trade lines and CPNs? Basically, how people from other cultures are basically creating whole new lives because they can get a CPN and a trade line. Uh, attach an 800 credit score to it. Next thing you know, in two years, they got enough buying power to have, like, they got a 800 credit score worth of buying power. Meanwhile, we don't know no better, so we'll get a 500 because we made some mistakes at 19 not knowing how to use our credit. Right. And we stuck with that shit till we 40 years old because nobody, nobody came to us and told us, like, look, you, you know you can get a trade line of CPN and get a whole new life. Right. Or, like, the credit statute of limitations, just how crime drop off, certain mm-hmm. crimes, after seven years, right. credit does too. Oh. Uh-huh. So you got people who 18 who dealing with something at 29 that's still on their credit. You know, it could be something like a petty phone bill. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. But due to the credit statute limitation, after seven years, they got to remove that. Right. But no, nah, so basically, like those are all all those spots are intellectual properties that you see right there. Like the, these cars match up with those spots by color. So like one of my favorite ones, gold purchase. Uh-huh. I always try to educate people on the value of gold versus the dollar. Right. Which is like which is why like even with my jury, I just I go so heavy with my gold because I'm trying to retain a lot of value it's through my gold. Exactly. Yeah, Nip and I talked about that. Yeah, he, him, him and Killer Mike was like the first two people who ever really got me on that wave to understand yeah. it. Like, it I was mean, for real for me, man. With the, you know what I'm saying? When I saw the first kilo, yeah, yeah, the kilo uh, Cuban, right, right. I had to have it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and, and you know, and then he also showed me how to check the market. He's like, man, you just notice where gold is at when you buy it, because right, a kilo, right. a kilo of gold ain't gonna change mm-hmm. whether it's around your neck, sitting in a vault whatever it is it's still right. a kilo of gold exactly so you check if you buy it on this day and gold is worth <clears throat> 1200 uh yeah like 1200 mm-hmm. an ounce or whatnot then you, you if you keep it for a year and it's worth 1800 an ounce right. you get rid of it you done made that much money you did what i'm saying uh and so I, I I did I I made I made a little I made a little change off mine mm-hmm. and got once it got up there I got rid of it. <laughs> um, so I I mean I think that that's something that's 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 very valuable for the kid. But but how but now you show me how you learn. Mm-hmm. Show me how to have fun because that's what the kids want. That's what gotcha. is it fun, Derrica? You like so it? So look to me this, this is the funnest like, aspect. Think? To me to me <laughs> it's mad. To me this the funnest aspect right? With games like Monopoly. You had to compete, which is cool. But with this game, we practice collective economics. Oh. So the way it works is like you could trade properties with somebody or they could loan you money. Oh. So say like if we got somebody that's in the play and they greedy, uh-huh. like the way to win is get seven, seven intellectual properties. Because uh. they say by statistics, the person with seven streams of income is, is a millionaire first. So mm. basically uh, the way we set it up is like, and, this, and as I say, this is one of the funnest parts of me. Is your partner can not necessarily a partner, but other people playing can decide not to loan you nothing. Right. So like I done had times like I play with my pops and he convinced Derrica to give him money that I don't feel like she should have gave him. <laughs> so, he ended up winning the game because Derrica looking at it from a papa aspect. And I'm like, nah, Grandpa. babe. Yeah, I'm like, nah, babe, he's trying to bamboozle you, keep your money. <laughs> so no, that that to me that's where it really get fun. Like, like of course to start with, like the direction said, you gotta do the learning first. Cause I wanted learning to be the priority. Okay. But once you once you define these intellectual properties, like I said, like you see at the bottom and say you define it. Mm-hmm. So once you're able to define those, and that's when the game get fun. Credit like, utilization rules. Is it where, where are, where's the 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 dictionary or the the key? Where's nah, the the legend. There's they, no legend. No, nah, it's not one. They they no. Nah, I want them to work. They gotta go do their independent research. What? <laughs> yeah. I think you should have a legend <laughs> to say. Okay, so I need to know what credit utilization is. I can go here. All right, credit utilization, and I you kind of give them a little paragraph where they can read up on it. I, I think got you. that would well, be look, a good Well, look, I will upgrade. say this because they they gave me that idea last time when we right. put it. So th- this is the 30th anniversary edition. Like this one ain't coming out. The 30th anniversary. Yeah, my 30th birthday. Okay, gotcha. I'm so, about to say this thing ain't been out 30 years. No, no, no. So this one ain't coming out to mid next year, but you got yours already. But that's some that's some this next go around with this version where we will have that because she did tell me that last. Then we're gonna be worth more money. I got the pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. you you definitely gonna, you banner my song and Wallow got one that nobody else got. Nobody yeah. never had those because they only sent me five of those. I kept one and I gifted the rest out. But that's fine. So yeah, bro. No, just out the gate, they have to define them. They got to do they and, and I, you know what, bro. A lot of people ask me that. They hit me and I'm like, where is there a key or is there a God? I'm like, no, nah, go do your Googles and do your work. <laughs> but it is true. You can't go to your Google. Right. You can't so go to, your Google. to begin with, though, they would have to define those. And then, like you say, you pick your piece over there. So, big bro, one thing I'm huge on, right? Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm going to give you a lot of credit on this one, too, because I ain't going to lie. I ne- there, there is no other father of our culture that I saw uh, instill this and it's, it's definitely a page i took out your book but i'm big on family business right. i'm big on making sure my children are intentionally front and center on everything i do right so from the board game to every book to every curriculum uh to the video game we coming out with info about in-home banking with ps4 xbox and pc mm-hmm. i've plastered my children on absolutely everything so their likeness grows as mine grows so even down to the pieces this all family that's my grace tribe that's my children uh that's my children business this is my cousin who do a lot of my work. 
Uh, How I mean, do you know one from the other? Is it's, it's a name? Yeah, 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 the name on top. And then also what we did to make sure, like, we gave the culture a shot to be a part of it too, is we allowed people to buy spaces, advertising space within the game. Mm. So this one right here says- Like NASCAR. Yeah. 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 So e right. even like when you look at the directions, uh -huh. we plug in. Everybody that's rocking with us, we rocking with them. So these people purchase actual spaces in here. So I know this young lady, she got a lemonade business out of New Orleans. Mm. Hood Estates, one of the biggest, best real estate people, uh, real estate companies I know out in Jacksonville. So right. we also did that too. Just like I say, like outside of just a game, life, my lifestyle period by group economics. How can me and my people gather How together? How much it to get on the game? Uh, Big bro, the prices vary, but. They like a piece of like You might need to put the trap music museum on here. No, for sure, bro. Just just I ain't told nobody this yet, but banner character is already in the video game. That's I right. I ain't even said it yet. I ain't showed it yet, but right. he got a whole character that's gonna be So now how did it go from a board game to a video game? So look, I'm having another another morning. They, they still ready to they still ready to play. How do so how do you play? You pick you grab a piece. Yeah, you grab a piece. I mean, to for them to genuinely play, they would have to define these first, which is gonna take them a little while. Okay. They, they have to do that independent research which will take a little while okay but okay. the um as far as the video game i remember um when was it it probably was maybe four or five months ago i was going to see my jeweler and i'm sitting in there with him we having a conversation and i'm just also thinking like how, how do we continue to expand the in-home banking brand right and i remember like I don't, I don't watch tv at all but i do pay attention on the gram i'm on the internet all the time and I'm seeing the Fortnite madness. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing my research and I'm like, damn, you know, the video game industry, excuse me, it's headed towards being a, a trillion dollar industry. Right. So I'm like, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm with preventative maintenance. I'm trying to figure out how can we get ahead of things rather than sitting around waiting. That's right. So I hit my project manager who handled the board game. I'm like, bro, I want a video game. And he was like, you serious? I'm like, yeah. He was like, look, I got these dudes in Spain who willing to do it, but this it's only, it's a catch. He was like, you gotta wire them around ninety grand tomorrow morning. Huh? Yeah. He said he said wire them ninety grand tomorrow morning. He was like, I'll get you the coding pack that they have for Grand Theft Auto. He was like, it's never been done, bro, because it's not easy to get that coding pack. You gotta know somebody. Ninety grand. Yeah, to start it, just tomorrow. to start. Yeah, tomorrow morning. I and don't I, like I'm, the sound. And of I'm that. and and I'm in the jury store spending money as is. I'm like, damn, right? Just bought. I, you know, what, matter of fact, I had just it was around May first. I had just got the Nipsey piece. I had just okay. got that one out, and. He like uh he like you gotta wire it ASAP and he was like one more thing. I don't like that. Yeah, that he sound, like that sound good. He like one more thing. He like look, um he was like these dudes gotta dedicate their lives if you want this game done by tax time next year. Mm -hmm. So this 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 will be ready by this upcoming year around February. Mm -hmm. I'm like all right cool. He like uh he like they they only need hundred and fifty four dollars an hour. So I'm like plus the ninety. Oh oh yeah no no big bro it's like a nine hundred thousand dollar project what? total at this point. So he like they need a hundred. You know how much it costs to make a game? Me and Major were talking about making a game. He said oh, yeah. nine hundred thousand dollars so far. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 that's, that's, that's like you know, I almost mean, to the big well, stick. I already knew it was gonna be a lot. You did. I knew it was gonna be a lot. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's close to the big <laughs> stick. Yeah, yeah. So he like uh, catching on guard, right? He he he, he like, hey, it's only one fifty four hour. I'm like one hundred fifty four hours. Ain't nothing. I'm like, how many hours though? One hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, how many hours though? He was like. Oh man, ain't that bad? It's only like six thousand seven hundred and eighty nine. I was like, I go get my phone. I'm like, bro, six thousand seven hundred and eighty nine hours. Yeah, he he Shit. he like um, for two no no people? no. Hold on, hold on, bro. It might have been a hundred. No no, it was six thousand. What? Right. So I do the math. I'm like, bro, you talking about eight hundred grand? He was like, well, look, give me the ninety, and they'll break the rest up in increments. I got out that next one, and I sent him like eighty something and some change, and we start rolling and. At this point, it's 12 developers out in Spain who are making the game happen. But we, we actually re released an official trailer on Black Friday. Oh, so it's, cool. it's coming along. But by February, full-blown game will be out for PC, Xbox, and PC. So now what's the first step after you learn these things when you want to play this game? Got you. So after the first step, we start rolling. Okay. And, like, th this is a big thing, too. I like too. that. Start rolling. This is a big thing, too. I try. I definitely make sure I tie it in with our culture because a lot of people hit me and be like, in Monopoly, when you cross start, you get paid. Right. I'm like, bro, uh, in our world, we 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 born behind the eight ball. Yeah. So for me to give you fifteen hundred dollars just for being alive, is not really yeah, real. That's not our reality. Right. Feel me? So you'll shoot your dice. I roll day ten. So I'm gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at that. I done already ended up in jail. Damn. So at that point, well, that I'm busted. I'm sitting in the can. Then the next person goes, "Bay, roll the dice." 
How you end up in jail? You just visiting or you in there? No, no, I'm I'm in there for now till my next turn. Is she in there with you? Man, but you wrote you wrote a ten. You you ain't even got a tap. You just go head right over there with Good. me. Good. All right, major, you wrote. Grab the dice, bro. Something tells me Ronald Reagan's behind this. <laughs> <laughs> An eleven. Woo! You escaped, major. What does right. that say? That's a trust account. That's a trust account. So at this point, major got the opportunity. Now you start out with five hundred. Oh, okay. So Major got an opportunity to buy that space if he want to. So what Major would do, Major would go to the cards. Where the green cards at? That's a green side. Uh, Trust account, right? So at this point, if Major want to buy that property, Major got to be able to define what a trust account is. Because my, my, my thing is, if you can't define it, you ain't got no business buying it. So okay. Major would define what a trust account was, and uh -huh. then he would pay. He would, he would put $180 back into this pile. And he will own that, that he will own that actual intellectual property. So this is what else happened. Say Derricka rolled, which is not possible. Say she rolled a one and she landed on Major's property. Uh -huh. Derricka got to got to got to be able to recite that property, or Derricka may have to cough up some bread too. Or if she's wearing a, or if she's went around once already, she had the opportunity to buy that from him as well. Okay. So the key is really this: collective economics. Right. Now, what is the thing that's different from Monopoly? So, like, we all start out with five hundred dollars. So, if Major ain't got enough, he could borrow that money from me, you, yeah. or Derek. He could ask you for it. Who, who, whoever collects seven of these first is the actual winner. Gotcha. Or, or when that person collects seven, they can make a decision to double back and divvy them out and help other people. Uh, so, like, I always want to want want to pound it in people's head. Like, it's collective economics. I don't mm -hmm. want to compete with my people. I don't want to compete with my neighbor. I'm trying to figure out how we can all get some money because the key is to beat the system. Mm -hmm. So these right here is called system issues. So like when you roll and you land on the SI spot, mm -hmm. is what you're gonna see. you'll see something like check the disparities between powder cocaine and crack cocaine. Mm. Too bad your coast, your culture investing in crack cocaine. Now go to prison for two of your turns. Mm. A, lo a lot of our youngins don't know that. What this, was it? This, it was a hundred to one. Then it went to fifty to one. Now it's what twenty to one. I believe so. And and even like with the opioid crisis. Our youngins still ain't figured out that, bro. They hitting us way harder, and they just get right. drug treatment program. Right, we going right. straight up the road now. Yeah. Or, marijuana is a legal billion dollar business now, but you were intentionally not educated on that part. You've been arrested. Mm. Way too many of our people sitting in prison for dirty urines, and now it's a whole legal business, and people opening up weed warehouses and and just living their best lives. Yeah, that's real. So basically, with system issues. Mm -hmm. Those are always gonna, always gonna. Uh, these are always negative. Okay. But it's always gonna give them some form of education on this system and how they right. gotta play this game in real life. That's real. Yeah. So, 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 major. Now, you and I, we're gonna, we're gonna play this game. Derek, what's your favorite part of the game? We're gonna play this game later. Why not? It's fun. Man. Okay. And we're gonna have to learn. Favorite one to land on is this one. Why is that your favorite one to land on? You can define it. What yeah, is it called? That's, that, that's one of the ones she know off top, so she don't what even is need it? no research. What is it? What does it say? Here, speak it to the mic. It says fractional reverse banking. Here, speak it speak to, to the, the mic, mic babe. Fractional reserve banking. That's one of my favorite ones that I can define easily. Okay, try it. Tell us what fractional reserve banking is. Banks use governments to loan flip and gamble other people's money. Oh, okay. All right, now... <clears throat> That's a very, I think this, this is a cool ass game, bro. And if you, can, if you can actually, I think if you can actually get people to learn these mm -hmm. methods and systems and practices. Let's turn it uh, Yeah, you can have a seat too, Mage. Thank you so much, boss. We'll, we'll get this and we're going we're gonna to bust the box open when we get to the house. Yeah, man, I think this is phenomenal. Appreciate I think, that. I think it's phenomenal. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, all right, so, so what do you want this board game to teach the next generation? Um, I really wanted. I really wanted. My biggest thing I want them to understand mm -hmm. above everything is common sense and traditionalism are friends. Mm. And that if we don't figure out a way to deviate deviate from the system that we've seen fail us a hundred times, we really not gonna get far. Like Thanksgiving is what, like five six days away. Yeah, three generations of about twenty people are gonna sit in the room and eat like gods for one day out of the year, and then return to the struggle that following Monday. At some point, like I guess I give everybody this example. If your grandma damn near dropped dead while cooking that food, does anybody have the means to pay for an immediate surgery? Mm. The twenty of us have no business sitting at no table parlaying and bullshitting and just celebrating the fruits of life when in all actuality we live in a struggle. Yeah. So like you gonna have some people, like I said, they're gonna eat like gods that day and then for the next two weeks waiting on that next check, they're gonna be wondering how they either gonna eat on their lunch break or what type of sandwich they're gonna get. 
Yeah. So for me, like, as I look past three to four generations and we watch them do the same thing over and over again, at some point we just got to wake up and be like, you know what, we might need to try something different. Otherwise, we just gonna, we gonna be stuck in this problematic cycle. So in home baking for me, as, as far as the tradition, I'm sorry, the generations coming, I just want like, it really it really go back to unlearn and relearn. I want them to know like, adaptation is a must. Right. Cause too many people moving with that 1979 theory and wondering why like, it ain't cracking, it's, it's not gonna crack. Like, it's 2019, artificial intelligence, robots are here. You yeah. still trying to do things the way that they did it back in 85. So. That's my biggest thing is just advancing the advancing the youngins that's coming behind us. Like my motto has always been, I want my children to be able to trump me in a third of the time. Mm. I'm thirty, she eight. My oldest is eleven, which means they right at that point where y'all got to get y'all shit together and y'all got to kick fully <laughs> off. Yeah, y'all right at that point where y'all got to get y'all shit together and y'all got to kick it off. Cause if not, I'm not I'm not even living by the own standard my own standards that I set for myself. That's real. That's real. I mean, so I heard that you said that, you know, a lot of young people in our culture <clears throat> aren't investing in their future. Mm -hmm. Now, explain why you said that. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm only 30, but mm -hmm. just from the research and the things that I've seen in the past, mm -hmm. I feel like this this generation, I feel like this generation do got the, the power to change things. They Absolutely. just got to redirect their mindset. Every generation has the power to change things. It's just yeah. which one of them actually going to stand up and do it. Right. Yeah. I think this generation move with a level of fearlessness that mm. if directed the right way, could be extremely dangerous. I could do that. But, uh, but, but I just think a lot of times, you know, like every other generation, they get caught up in certain things and they don't move forward. But as far as like entrepreneurship and businesses, like I said, I'm only 30. I ain't been here super long, but... Right. I've never seen a period like this where so many people are eager to control their own destiny and control the board and do things their way. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, you're also in real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what have you learned about like investing in property? That's a funny one. I took my first L, actually, probably like three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a property January 6th this year, a lot. Yeah. And Just a lot? Yeah, just a lot. How big? How big that lot? That? One acre? Okay, Acre. Yeah. Acre. Um, Where in Tampa? Yeah. Okay. It's right outside of Tampa. It's called Sefner, but gotcha. uh, I bought a lot out there, and I ended up losing like 5K on it. But it was Why? a learning curve. Why? Um, You know what? It it, wasn't, it really didn't even have nothing to do with the value of the lot. It's the permits that they pulled when I first got the lot. Mm. I ain't make that money back. Mm. So I broke even in a sense okay. as far as value, but you I lost. a valuable lesson. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So... Outside of that, um, I just got to, me, me and my pops together, we just acquired uh, another house that's been in our family. How long has my family that? I know it was built 100 years ago, but. Yeah, yeah. So we're in, we in the process. We're we going um, we gonna to go through the demolition process, and then mm. we're going to actually build, like, uh, apartment units on that one. Mm. So that'll be another. Multifamily. Yeah, yeah, multifamily, okay. for sure. For sure. Uh, I mean, now. Uh, Real estate is something that's near and dear to my portfolio mm -hmm. uh, because I, I too have, you know, been uh, making plays in real estate ever since. And probably before I put out my first album, mm -hmm. I was buying houses, flipping houses, renovating houses. Um, <clears throat> and it made me feel a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. because, you know, the first house that me and my uncle did, uh, was a crack house that I sold mm -hmm. dope out of. Gotcha. And I actually saw that house become a home for a family. Mm -hmm. That made me feel good. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, eight months later when I saw it was a crack house again, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of let me know you got to move, accelerate right, right. the curriculum. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we ended up doing about... 80 some houses over the course of probably eight nine years mm -hmm. um but wait bro i remember that what, what was the name of new it? finish i new remember finish that because you had an interview and you was talking about uh i seen it bro because it was something you had built i remember though yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. long new time ago construction. probably duplex triplex yeah yeah you know what i mean um and then the market crash mm -hmm. and when the market crash i lost a few hundred thousand and I was like, man, you know what? I got a day job. I don't have to take this. Right, right, right. I wasn't willing to stick it out, <laughs> you know. But I did learn. What I saw, I learned after the market kind of bounced back. Mm -hmm. I saw that commercial real estate didn't take a dive. Right. Commercial real estate sustained. Mm -hmm. 
And that is what motivated me to dive back in right. with commercial real estate. And um, I got uh, a few, man, I got a few things around here, man. Mm -hmm. But the most, the, mo the thing that I'm proudest about is I purchased um, a plaza that was a Kmart mm -hmm. and an old abandoned grocery store. Gotcha. And at first when I bought it, I wanted to make it a club. I ain't gonna lie. I wanted mm -hmm. to make it a big ass club. You had man. one all right? Yeah, Crucial. Crucial this is yeah. right down the street from Club Crucial. Okay. I'm talking walking distance. Gotcha. Both of them are on Bankhead, my old neighborhood, where I used to ride my bike. This is the, the building that was the Kmart where I went in and bought my Nintendo games mm -hmm. and, you know, saved up my money to go and buy stuff for my bike and so right, on right. and so forth. Um and the grocery store that my grandmama went and shopped at to mm -hmm. feed my family, I mean, to feed her family. Uh, and so buying that was real dope to me. And I just wanted to make it a club. But yeah. then the time that it took me to actually draw up the plans to make a club, I said, you know what? A club would be, pro it, would, it would be profitable, but that would be, conventional that would mm -hmm. be normal that right. would be what motherfuckers is expecting you to do right what can we do that's needed to the community that's a, like a that could be an asset to the community gotcha uh and that's <clears> when <throat> we partnered with uh the city of atlanta mm -hmm. atlanta housing authority and invest atlanta and we're, we're about to break ground this january on our first uh project as me as a developer which mm -hmm. is a 200 unit multi-family mixed use like 21,000 square feet of retail, community yeah. garden, community center. Gotcha. Um, and it's gonna be all affordable. Right. And I wanna, I wanna introduce, you know, an aspirational mm -hmm. way of living to this community. Right. When people are trying to drive everybody out with gentrification, I exactly. wanna create a way for mm -hmm. people who made the community what it, what it is. Right for them to be able to stay and reap the benefits of, you know, this. That garden thing gonna be amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm gonna try to see if I can fit me a greenhouse in there too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's 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 something that I'm extremely proud of and, mm -hmm. and, and I think that long term, my, my, my goal is to build a skyscraper on Bankhead. Yeah. And anybody who's from Atlanta, that sounds preposterous, I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but to build a skyscraper <laughs> on Bankhead. I know it sounds preposterous, but I've already started acquiring the land and I'm as soon as I get a few more pieces, my assemblage will be yeah, complete. Yeah. <laughs> uh so I salute you and admire you, you for being able to I just swim upstream mm -hmm. with everybody else your age. Uh, and you know, if you're like just from where you from, everybody mm -hmm. is kind of doing the same thing. Absolutely. For you to be able to dare to be different, mm -hmm. that's something that's commendable and noble. Appreciate and, it. You know, bro. I think that you should be celebrated for it. Appreciate it. I, I want to tell you something too. Sure. I remember I made a video, right? Uh huh. Uh, I was trying to buy this school building in my city. Okay. And I had like a hundred thousand cash on me. Right. And, bro, I want to tell you too, like sometimes it just be the verbal salute that right. go a long way. You had jumped in there and you was like, bro, whenever, whenever y'all ready, just shoot. Just hit hit me some along them lines, bro. Yeah. But that fire alone, bro, because literally nobody responded. People was in the <laughs> comments, you know, people in the comments and whoop de whoop, but right. you was the only person, bro. You, Juice from the Flatbush Zombies. Right. And, 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 and Banner was probably like the only three people who even like looked at it and was like, I'm taking this nigga kind of serious. Right. But, bro, just that, well, you bro. You $100,000 cash. You got to take that seriously. Yeah, yeah. But That's bro, not I, to be frowned at. I just want to tell you in person, <laughs> you know bro, because I never got to tell you, but that verbal that verbal push, like, was enough because it was some nice. I was like, fuck this school. Make a school for what? My children home school. Right I'm doing on. this shit for the streets, but I just kept that in mind, and, like, that 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 kept me going for a long time. Well, man, I'm, I'm happy to be any support Mm -hmm. You know, at any level, man, I'm happy to 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 be some inspiration, some support, yeah, for sure, uh, <clears throat> and example, if any in any way. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking, since we're talking about real estate, do you know 
that Shaq just opened up an eighty million dollar luxury building in his hometown of Newark, New Jersey. No, I ain't know that. Yeah, see, Newark, New Jersey is on the come up. It's the neck, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah, like, like Atlanta. I was you just know? there probably like a month ago. Yeah, I got a homie yeah. out there named Benedict who do a lot of real estate. Right, and yeah. you know Newark used to be the hood hood. Yeah, they call sure. that shit Brick City. <laughs> you understand me? Uh, Shaq and Queen Latifah, they out there buying all that shit. Mm-hmm. And doing the right thing, right, right, getting right. in the way, you know. Eighty what I'm million? No, I ain't know that. Eighty I million. Ain't him. I don't know how I missed that. And you know, the thing for me is, I I'm impressed by that because I saw this happen. You know, I heard Jay talk about when it happened in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he wish he would have. Yeah. He yeah. wish he would have known what was going on. He could have caught. He could have mm-hmm. caught it. A, a, a puff talked to me about when it happened in, in, in Harlem. Mm-hmm. Um. And and even here in Atlanta, I see on the east side in Kirkwood, uh, which is you know Zone Six, you know what I'm saying, where where a lot of a lot of your favorite rappers are from. I mm-hmm. seen they hoods transform, right. Fourth Ward and Boulevard over in that way. I seen that hood transform uh, at Grant Park, which is mm-hmm. another hood on the east side. I seen that hood transform. And it didn't really mean nothing to me until they brought they ass to my hood. Right. When I saw a white lady walking her dog down Bankhead, you hear me? Right, I ain't gonna lie. A them gay two, couple them with a garden I see. on Simpson Road. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. be damned if <laughs> I'm going to endure the worst that this community has had to offer. Dodge bullets and, and risk my freedom right. and survive it all. Mm-hmm. And only to see other people who didn't have to endure those circumstances come in and deem it as as valuable and I not participate. Right. So I did what any man who has that thinking would do. I got in the way. I took my money at the bank. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for no damn loan. Everything I own, I own cash, including where we sit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't asked for no loan. You know why? Because... I can't wait on you to approve me and think that I am, you know, a, a valuable or good enough for right. you in order for you to loan me some money to do it. If I was waiting on somebody to give me a loan for any of the properties I have, mm-hmm. I'd still be waiting. I wouldn't have shit. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Including the Trap Music Museum. That's a yeah. building. I just, I bought it. Mm-hmm. And after I bought the building, I'm like, man, what are we going to do here? Then we was just, you know, kind of brainstorming. It's like, man, let's do a museum. And he's like, damn, what are we going to do it? And, then, and, and, and when we started talking about doing a museum, because it was only for the purpose of celebrating the 15th year anniversary, the 15th anniversary of trap music, mm-hmm. which was last year. Was, that's, when we, that's when we opened, why we opened. It was only supposed to be a temporary installation. But the demand called for us to remain open indefinitely. Right. And we still open, lying around the corner up the street right now. Oh, yeah, right been there. You know yeah, what I mean? Around the yeah. hey, it's a blessing. It's an honor. <laughs> but if I were waiting on somebody to, one, fund the idea of a mm-hmm. trap music museum right never would happen if i were waiting on someone to fund the purchase of this building mm-hmm. never would happen uh so waiting on other people to see that's why god gave us the vision mm-hmm. so we can get out there and if and, and, and if we got to wait on other people to see it along with us i ain't gonna keep waiting yeah yeah so i took my money at the bank bought that building uh uh, uh, also, I, I got a liquor store and some, some, you know, houses next to it, which is an assemblage that I'm going to, you know, eventually build a mixed use building. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's another building on the opposite side of the Trap Music Museum, which is sitting on probably about an acre and some change that we grab, and three more commercial buildings, like on Front Street on Bankhead. Gotcha. Like uh, all of that came from. Oh, and along with the plaza that I told you about earlier, all of that came from just the thought of, I'll be damned if they gonna come over here and goddamn make right. this shit, you know, uh, a half a million to six hundred fifty thousand dollar house neighborhood, and I'm not involved. Right, right. Uh, and I think all of us should take the same approach. Mm-hmm. All of us should take it personally. You know, because a, a guy that I spoke to, he's a pastor, but he's a buddy of mine. And he say, uh, the answer to the problems that plague the black community has always been make enough money, move out, and never look back. Mm-hmm. 
So if that is how we solve our issues in the community, how can we ever look down on somebody who sees value in something that we've abandoned? Right. You did? Yeah. And that made me think about, because when I got my money, I would think about buying a house. Shh. I thought the same thing. I'm finna mm. get far away as possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, when in actuality, if I'd have took my money, man, and built somewhere closer around there, mm. I would be making money instead of losing money. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Now, now my house is really just like an heirloom and it got sentimental value. I'd never sell it. But I would have had, way, it would have been more of an investment. Mm hmm had I got down, bought a house in Kaya Heights, right. you know what I'm saying, and bought two houses and built and put them together mm -hmm. and made me a compound, uh, which is hindsight is 20, 20 yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? But I, that's why when you doing this right here, right now, and you know what I'm saying, you seizing the moment, mm -hmm. bro, I think, man, that shit is 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 exemplary. And it's something, it's something that your peers and, and the people who are around you should celebrate and support Appreciate that. That's why whatever <laughs> I can do for you, you know what I'm saying? I won't give me 10 of each book you got, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You can ship it to me however, however you're going to bill me. If it's cash or, you know, go, uh, 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 what is it? What the, what the online shit? Cash, cash app. app. Yeah, that's what the kids do. <laughs> cash app, Zelle, you know, PayPal, all that shit. I don't have none of it, but I figure out a way, man, because yeah. I think <laughs> it's our job to support. People Absolutely. like you who out here doing it the right way. For sure, appreciate it. Now, according to Fortune Fortune Magazine, there have been just 16 black CEOs at the helm of Fortune 500 companies since 1999. Mm -hmm. And currently, there are only four black CEOs. Why you think that is? Uh, I'm going to say for one, I think a lot of them may want to be under the radar because mm. our success ain't, you know, our success, our success is not viewed and handled like other demographics of people's success because i know it, it's even been a lot of opportunities uh like one of the people that handled my pr i remember him mentioning forbes and i right. remember thinking about like damn i'm on the type of phone calls i'm gonna get from my relatives uh if they know like what type of roi we bringing in with these board games and right. things of that nature so i think one that might be a reason and two um i ain't gonna lie to you, bro from from my perspective i just at one time i was but for the most part i know these days i just I get more satisfaction out of being celebrated by my culture than really like being inducted into theirs and them giving me a pat on the back. So I think it may be that, or it may just be the simple fact that a lot of those factions are still biased. Yeah. Or a lot of us may not really be seeking that ownership and that CEO. I think more of us are doing it now. Right. But to pedal it to that level, they're going, they may have to put in 15, 20 years to even get it to that level. But I think the system wasn't designed to support the idea of us getting to that level. Yeah, exactly. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was it was designed mm -hmm. to to prohibit us right. from making it to that level. Which brings me to my next question now. And um I mean it it, it accompanies the, the the first one. How do you think that we can move the culture forward, mm -hmm. right? And get smarter and and, and, and more successful black businessmen and women. Mm -hmm. To, to to occupy those CEO chairs. Got you. I think for the most part, uh, it's gonna sound cliche, but it's gonna come from the unification. Right. I think a lot of us already be in our own way, and a lot of us, like I said, we got poor self image. So, right. We really, that's 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 some type of shit that's in our wildest dreams to see our peers grow up to be CEOs and things like. I've had people that went to the same school I did. Uh huh. We had the same level of education, same opportunities that look at me crazy or feel like. I was lucky or I had something better than them because I got to where I'm at. Right. So I think too, our culture has a huge sense of entitlement that, that hinders us a lot of times. But but the most part, big bro, I think I think support is the biggest thing because like you said, I mean they talk about it every year, but we have a hell of a lot of spending power. Right. A lot of times we just pour it in pour it into things that don't regenerate value. That's true. Or that don't really push our culture forward. That's true. Like for every opposite product there's somebody in our culture that's doing something damn near identical or doing that same exact thing right instead of making things that can collectively support one another right 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 we rather just venture out do a hell of a lot of support with them and then sprinkle a few dollars like i i love that episode on with, with mike when he did the uh <laughs> <laughs> when he just went straight black but yeah. i think that really got to be done and i trigger, think you're talking about trigger one yeah, yeah yeah i I think our culture economics will be way stronger but we definitely a lot of times just bearing our own way and 
it, it internally for some reason it like pain us to help somebody that looked like us. That's real. I think that's definitely. I think if we were to pool our resources together, we'd be able to accomplish a lot more than we are right now. Um, that's why you know when you when you when you when you said that that and mentioned the thought of buying a building or a school, I mm -hmm. I supported that because I know that we need more of that. Mm -hmm. And what we need now, Killer Mike and I, we actually purchased a building that you know what I'm saying we're gonna open a, a, a seafood restaurant and we did that together. Mm -hmm. And that just came from. <clears throat> Cause I was already kind of motivated to buy up a lot of stuff, and I had like mm -hmm. three, four things that I was about to close on. I mm -hmm. then kind of stretched my cash a little, right, right. you know what I'm saying, a little farther than I mm -hmm. wanted to. And I say, and Mike and I always had these discussions. I just picked up the phone. They say, "Hey man, I'm finna buy this building, man. I'm finna buy Bankhead Seafood. You want you want to come in with me?" Mm -hmm. He was like, "How much?" I say, "Man, I got it down to three sixty five. So you know what I'm saying, it's gonna be like you know one one fifty seven. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean?" And 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 he was like, well, I was just finna buy the new demon, but I guess <laughs> I just won't buy my new demon and I just, you know what I'm saying, I'll buy yeah. the building with you. So mm -hmm. we put our bread together and bought the building. Gotcha. And you know what I'm saying, that's that's something we all need to do now. Right. If me, you, Killer Mike, David Banner, DC Young Fly, mm -hmm. Jay Morrison, uh, Carlos Miller. And, yeah. Uh, Lil Duval, Charlemagne the God, mm -hmm. all legit put up a hundred thousand dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. Go grab some, boom. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some big and something that you that that, that kind of establishes a a unit mm -hmm. of of a collective system that right. that we moving together and we pooling our resources together to grow something. Mm -hmm. uh, that concept is something that I learned by listening to Nip. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, when were you first introduced to Nip and his philosophies? And had you ever met him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first time, Bullets Ain't Got No Names, Volume 2. Uh, and I was just a fan at that point. Mm -hmm. We didn't meet to... Uh, me and Nip met. We spoke a couple times because Nip had bought the parenting curriculum mm -hmm. probably like four four years ago. Right. And we, we, we rapped back and forth on the internet. We ain't politic in person until Victory Lap. Gotcha. And um, I remember it was funny. First thing he said, he's like, bro, I got to bring you money to Florida so Derek can show about them guns. <laughs> I don't know. Some some lady, it was a lady on his team, though. She's like, uh-uh, you know nothing about them guns. But <laughs> we politic shortly there, and then we talked again um, when he did the deconstruction for the album, mm -hmm. which which was a, that's one of, like, my my best but most daunting memories because I remember we was, all, we, it was in a little studio room like this. He politicking on the album. And they did a break. And my baby mama was like, you ain't finna go holler at Nip? I'm like, no, nah, it's a gang of people here. I ain't never met them. I'll leave them alone. We could talk anytime. Right. Yeah, I ain't tripping. And then not knowing, like, that was the last time I was gonna actually see him. Mm. And then for my 30th birthday, I booked him. Uh, we sent the bread out. <laughs> we, we, we we sent the deposit out, March 15th. Damn. And then two weeks later, we got the call. And they was like, yeah, you, you know, of course he ain't gonna make it, X, Y, Z. But no, nah, that last time I seen him was at the deconstruction. I'm like, damn, I should have went and hollered at bro. I, Damn. I was trying to be nice and shit, like, oh, let everybody else. They don't, they ain't never met him, right. and Not knowing that was the last time. I was Seize the moment, cause time is fleeting. For sure, is the lesson that came from that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I, I God, God bless him. I miss him. You know what I mean? And it, his passage mm -hmm. just made me kind of like at myself, man. I, it's kind of like what you just said. All mm -hmm. those time we was like always saying. Yo, man, we gonna get up, man. Look, mm -hmm. man, we gonna frill, man. We gonna get up this time, yeah, yeah. man. Nah, man, look, man, I'm gonna hit you, man, when I get there. We gonna, right. You know what I mean? We did that so much mm -hmm. that the times that we actually spent together pale in comparison of all, all the times we could have right, actually right, right, spent right. together if I would have did. I remember one time <clears throat> when we he came down here, man. I took him to the, the, the Dave Chappelle, took him, and, and, and we, we all just chill. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We went to a Dave Chappelle show. And then afterwards, you know, we was backstage kicking shit. Then we all decided to go to Magic City. Mm -hmm. So we went to Magic City and kicked, hung, kicked it and hung out and chilled. And, and, and afterwards, I think we was all lit like a motherfucker. We went when we, when we went in. He was like, "Yo, I owe you, man. When you come out to L.A., man, just hit my line. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Dinner on me, you know. <laughs> and I never, you know what I'm saying? When I went out there that time. Mm -hmm. I had my own shit going on, man. Just never got around to hitting him. Right. Now we saw each other, you know, time and time again, even beyond that. But I'm like, man, that that time 
was an opportunity. I feel like those those are moments that we all got to do a better job with right, each right. other of you know making yeah. good on because we don't know how much time each of us, any of us, have. Right, right. Um, so shit, bro. I mean, it's. It, I mean, I know this shit is a long time, but you got a lot of shit to talk about, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, you own one hundred percent of everything that you do. Absolutely, everything. A hundred percent of everything. Everything. Why is that important to you? And would you ever take on a partner? Uh, I mean, that's important. Like I said, like I ain't gonna lie, my biggest teacher on that was Nip. Right. Just showing how we could. Uh, one of the biggest things I love, bro, is creative control. That's real. And I know, like, if I had commercial ties, I wouldn't be able to say some of the things I say. This is true. They might tell me how to look, how to dress. You just have to of... choose your partners carefully. Right. That's all. Right. You have to have like-minded partners. Yeah. You know what I mean? The worst thing in the world is being in business with somebody that you that, that you just can't see eye to eye with, yeah. but you stuck with them. <laughs> right. That's a very bad feeling. Yeah. Um, I mean... That's another thing, like, you know, Nip came to me, man, and asked me how to, you know, this was back when I turned uh, a merch item, mm -hmm. uh, a Hustle Gang t-shirt, a Hustle Gang t-shirt, some hoodies, mm -hmm. just merch items. I really was giving them away right. one year for BET weekend, mm -hmm. but they were so dope, and people liked them so much, right. you know, the quality of the garment was good, the design mm -hmm. was dope, and motherfuckers just kept asking for them, kept asking for them. So we're like, shit, after the weekend, we started selling them. Right, right, right. And we sold so many so soon that, like, distributors started calling us. Because we mm -hmm. already had a clothing line with a coup, but our, our partners in a coup, the manufacturers and distributors that we partnered with, called us like, hey, man, uh, you got retailers asking about this other thing you're doing? What right, is right. this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, <clears throat> it's a merch item. Yeah. But... Ultimately, after we made probably about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and maybe from September to New Year, we mm -hmm. made like seven hundred fifty, close to a million dollars off of just t-shirts, hoodies. You know what I mean? And we was like, "Yo, Hannah was like, I'm tired of packaging and shipping this shit, right, so right. I want to hand it over to somebody else." <laughs> yeah. And uh, we did a we did a deal with with. The same uh, manufacturers and distributors that do uh, that, that we partner with for a coup, mm -hmm. which is uh, RP55. And so when Nip saw that, he said, Man, how did you take this just this plain hoodie and turn it into a full on line? Mm -hmm. I was like, Well, well, I started out doing it myself, and then you know, I created the demand for it, and then after that, I just went out and partnered with a manufacturer and a distributor right. to do all the hard work and heavy lifting for me. And all I got to do is market it and promote it. Mm -hmm. And um, and we got to, you know, we do a revenue share. Yeah, I got and you. A, and, an equity, <clears throat> and an equity split. And um, he was like, all right, cool. But what about the manufacturing and the, and the distribution side? Like, how mm -hmm. do you... How we do? How 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 that how is that done? I say, well, see, you know, I told you, I ain't got to worry about that. Right, right, right. Cause they could they do it. He's like, nah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So he basically took that information and said, well, I'm gonna cut these people who he partnered with out, and I'm gonna do all that shit myself, right. <laughs> and I'm gonna go even <laughs> further. I'm going to be the retailer. Right, right. I'm gonna create a destination mm -hmm. for people to come and grab my shit. So I, I'm manufacturing, I'm distributing, mm -hmm. and I'm the retailer. Right. That shit was like, he basically took what I did and, you know what I'm saying, and one up it. That shit, that was real cool. And that was like one of the fondest memories that I have of, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Him taking what I did and flipped that shit on his head and, you know what I'm saying, and and, and, and turning it into the marathon. Clothing. Exactly. That shit dope. And, 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 bro, like, just speaking from him too, some of the things I got, well, I got that from him as well, but just, I basically assess what entities or companies help my business to be successful. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I try to remove our reliance on those entities and companies. So just like another example, we launched a security company mm -hmm. because before I'm running around with like, you know, eight chains on and I need somebody who may not have my best interest in a shootout to have my back, mm. although I carry two, but I rather, um, I rather create a family structure Cause I feel like it's a vested interest. Sure. I feel like my pops gonna make sure somebody not able to shoot me before right. a stranger is. Right. You feel me? So I I've tried to do the same thing. Well, we we've done the same things, but bro, it it was thanks to Nip. He showed me a lot of them things. Even with the authoring from self publishing 
till we set up uh, our own self publishing company if we had a voice. Okay. So now like we do the, we do out from the writing to the editing, we do everything from scratch, and then we able to monetize it to where those funds are reciprocated back. That's a hundred percent. So right. No, nah, bro, I I know exactly what you mean. Even like with China, like it get costly making the board games because uh -huh. we do everything out of pocket, but. I ain't gonna lie, that return. That's real. You can't, you can't be mad at that you, return. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And you have developed an intellectual <laughs> property for yourself. Where, exactly. You know, for when you making money along the, along the journey, but when you get there, mm -hmm. ain't no, ain't nobody to, to, to hold nothing over your head. Exactly. Ain't nobody to, you know, uh, uh, assume the credit for your success. Right. But you. Right. And I, again, I think it should be celebrated. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, and that's what we're about here, man. You know, having the discussions <clears throat> with people who push the conversation forward for the culture and the generation. That's mm -hmm. what Expeditiously is about. And now you've made it to the speed round. So I'm going to just rattle off some, I'm just rattle okay. off some question, and you just off the top of your head, just answer them like quick. Okay. okay? All right, quick as you can and as short as you can. No more than a sentence or a few words. I got you. If you really, if you really dope, do it in one word. All right. All right, cool. How do you define success? Doing what the fuck I want. Who is giving you the best advice? Malik Youssef and David Banner. Okay. What advice do you have for young entrepreneurs listening? Um, creative control. Hesitate to give them equity, and do shit your way. Mm. In your opinion, what's the number one way to build wealth? Investing in your children if you have them. Mm. What goals do you still have set for yourself? Uh, I want a college course taught on my teachings, and I want a statue in my city, and it must have my tattoos included. <laughs> right on, <laughs> hey. All right, now this is now this is a tradition, but this is new. Mm -hmm. This is something different, okay? Because I've said before, exceptions are made for exceptional circumstances. I think you are exceptional. I think Appreciate you can handle it. this. <laughs> so we have a tradition here. The tradition is uh, that we will give a word of the week. Mm -hmm. Word of the week is usually based off of uh, the conversation or the guest or both. and But see, usually I give the word of the week. Mm -hmm. But now, because I know you are so exceptionally gifted and intelligent, I want you to pick one of your favorite words you think people don't know. You dig what I'm saying? I know you got a slew on. <laughs> and I want you to give them the definition. And I want you to use it in a sentence so they can go and use it, you know, at work tomorrow like they always knew the word they sell. I got you. Um, word of the week. I don't lie, bro. This one going to be a little, this one going to, it's simple to me. Uh-huh. But I've seen this, i just seen this, this, the opposite of this done so much that I just want to put it out there. Okay. Um, And it, it's really good geared towards the fellas. Okay. The word of the week is alluring. I see so many fellas that slide in the DMs, they slide in the comments and things of that nature, and they just use these old, outdated lines of beautiful, you fine as fuck, you fine as hell, you bad, X, Y, Z. Um, one of the things I learned with women is they can appreciate a high level of uh, verbiage, mm. and they can appreciate when you actually hit them with something that make them do they Googles and figure out how beautiful you're trying to tell them that they are. Right. So for me, Rick Rowe, the word of the week would be alluring because a lot Which of- Which means the um, definition. In short, it's just another way to 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 also compliment her on her beauty or the way she carries herself, but also let her know that she has an energy that is that is almost uh it's more than attractive. It's, okay. it's, it's 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 almost an energy that physically draws you in rather than just saying like, "Oh, you fine as hell, or you bad, or things of that nature." So, I've I've learned that also. Um, so there we go. Define alluring. Alluring. Powerfully and mysteriously attractive or fascinating, seductive. Mm. You know, I just I, I just learned with bro in the, in, the, in the midst of the conversation, they can appreciate a compliment and some education at the same time. That's real. Now use alluring in a sentence. Uh, I mean, in my old DM, I don't slide in DMs no more because I'm 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 much more well behaved and <laughs> disciplined these days. But but she got you, don't she? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> she right there too. She holding the pistol. She, <laughs> she's a right. oh, forget where that pistol at. <laughs> but uh, I mean, no, bro. I said Use we in the this. sentence. Use alluring in the sentence so people can go fake like they knew it all the time. Gotcha, gotcha. Good morning, goddess. I I, I just had to remind you, you know, of how alluring you are. Uh, 
I don't mean to bother you, but I just caught myself stalking your page. Stalking your page today, you know, and just leave it at that. You can say that to her, too. I might, I probably did use that word. <laughs> I probably did. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Hey, man. Well, listen, brother. I appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? For appreciate sharing you, bro. <laughs> your, your, your wisdom, your perspective, your philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, and your, your, your vocabulary hey, with bro. the people here expeditiously. Uh, and tell them all the things you have for them to support you on. Got you. Uh, all right, y'all. So all the books, uh, the curriculums, the learning guides, the learning tools, one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations, tour dates, everything can be found at DerrickGrace2.com, D-E-R-R-I-C-K-G-R-A-C-E-T-W-O.com or DerrickGraceIHB, which stands for InHomeBanking.com. Uh, also, don't forget... This um not this fall but this spring we're dropping the first ever uh child black action figure. Derek will be coming out with her own doll. It's gonna be four foot tall. Yes, sir. Uh, check out the IG. I don't wanna give y'all too many details on what it's coming with, but it's definitely gonna be a game changer. So, um, and like I said, in home banking is transitioning to the video game world. So we'll be on PS4, Xbox, and PC this fall as well. So, yeah. In short, if you I go on my government name, if you Google Derek Grace. Everything that I put my energy, my time, and my oxygen into is going to pop up. And that's where y'all can support everything. You did. And look, all the books you got, like I said, mm -hmm. I want uh, about 10 of them a piece. How many books is it? I got five books and seven curriculums. Five books and seven. Well, damn, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, just put me, <laughs> give me, give me five. Give me five of everything. Give me five of everything. <laughs> damn, you got a lot of shit, <laughs> man. But hey, I want to buy everything you got, Jay, because I think it should be celebrated and supported. And I, I appreciate that big time, bro. Appreciate it. Right on, man. This has been expeditiously. Anything you want to say, Derek? Mm, no. You sure? You don't want to tell them about your doll or your slime? Mm. Oh, you got slime? Come on, come come up here to the mic. Yeah, you no. think you want to say? You don't want to say nothing, major? No. I yeah, babe. Like Graham. <laughs> tell them. You know, what, matter of fact, you tell them what your doll come with. It comes with the vest, a mini Speak board. Speak up. It comes with the vest. A, a bulletproof vest. And a mini board game and a string that I can say words. And an AR-15. Yeah. Because you're a superhero, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, but bro, just for, just just to reiterate, because she ain't speaking up, but she got a four-foot <laughs> dog coming. When you The dog actually got the blinking ability. The dog actually kicks out information. So the inform some of the information y'all just saw her kick, the dog will be able to uh, give that information. It'll have USB technology, so the information can be updated on a monthly basis so she could keep teaching the children. Mm. Come with an M16, because I believe in self-preservation. Why the M16, not the AR-15? Uh, no, no matter fact, Big Bro, it is an AR-15. Okay, it's I was AR just wondering, because the it's same gun, but just one of them is lighter and one of them is heavier. <laughs> don't ask me how I know it that, because I don't have any. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it come with an AR-15 that represents self-preservation. It come with a mirror to represent self-love. Okay. And then it comes with a mini board game to represent self-knowledge, because I feel like that's what a lot of our culture is missing. Right. But uh, bulletproof vest, combat boots, but she in a dress. So mm. it just give you that perfect vibe of that. Our girls can still be girls, but they could be fierce as well. That's what's up, man. Hey, I appreciate you, man, appreciate for you, all bro. that you're doing. And even more importantly, I appreciate you for representing for your generation Thank that you. you can look like this and mm -hmm. still be well-behaved, still be a man of respect, Absolutely. and still be an intellectual, still sure. be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and you know, and still be a father to your children and, and a leader for your community and the Absolutely. head of your family. So I appreciate that, bro. Thank you, big bro. Love and respect. Appreciate you Derek Grace, me. everybody, expeditiously. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.